Hi there and welcome to the second day of the Shiridu Studio Tour week. This week I am taking you on a tour in the studio as if I was giving you a tour in person. But since I can't host a big studio tour opening, we're just going to do it online for a whole week. This one is here because there's still so much space. I'm going to tell you more about it uh, later in this video. So this is day two. If you've missed the first day, um, please click on the link below this video to find it uh, so you can watch uh, the whole studio week. Today we're going to go over all the tools that I use for my quilting. And I am sitting behind the newest addition to the Shiridu family. Um, this is a Vernia Q16. Um, I'm going to tell you more about it uh, later in this video, but I thought let's follow the process of making quilts and then discussing all the tools that come along while making a quilt. Let's see what uh, you start with when you want to make a quilt. Let's say I would want to make a foundation paper piecing pattern. Then uh, I would need well, a pattern, PDF, so have a printer over there. Uh, with which I can print on freezer paper or a tea bag paper, uh, whichever I want to use in a project. And over there, I have oh, there, I have rolls of tea bag paper that I use. And in the awesome moving drawer cabinet that I showed you in yesterday's video, I have my freezer paper. So that is that. That is where you start with a pattern. And then when you have your pattern drawn out, then you would need fabrics. So here I have all the fabrics that I have on mold. And uh, these fabrics I mostly use to make kits or to make bundles or to sell in my web shop. Um, sometimes when a new fabric line comes out uh, and I really like it to use in a new project, I buy the whole range of fabrics when they match my rainbowy style of fabrics uh, so I can make a project with it and then I also make it into kits uh, so uh, fabric kits so when I would want to make something just for myself I would dive into my personal stash and that is over here so I have boxes that's mostly knit fabric to make uh, baby clothes children's clothing I don't really go bigger than uh, children's size to make clothes. Uh, but here we have uh, cotton fabric and also these boxes are um, quilting fabric and then just my personal, uh, personal stash. Um, I think it's quite okay, it's not that big, right? Um, yeah, so when I'm, <laughs> I want to make something for myself uh, then I mostly uh, go in there and when I want to make something for a new design then I dive into these shelves of fabric and I do that because when I make something and it's really fun and I'm really happy with it and I've made it with these fabrics then I can already turn it into a kit for a while uh, when I have something and I make it with my personal stash then I just have little pieces of fat quarters or maybe half a meter and I don't have enough to make a uh, kit from that. So that's kind of the reason that I'm switching between those two. So after uh, deciding the, on the fabrics, it's, it's time to cut it. And over here on my work table, I have cutting mats in all kinds of sizes and colors. And over here in my top drawer, I have rotary cutters and scissors. So those are the tools that we'll need for our cutting. And I love uh, these rotary cutters the best. So I know you have rotary cutters that open when you start cutting, so uh, then they open by themselves. Um, yeah, you have lots of different, but I love these where you open them yourself and they will stay open until you close them again. Always close your rotary cutter because they are way too sharp. Um, but yeah, I really love these ones um, and I have a ton of scissors but mostly use rotary cutters to uh, to cut everything and uh, since we're discussing making foundation paper piecing patterns uh, I use rulers 
And those are also in my top drawer. So all kinds of uh, add a quarter rulers. This is a larger add a quarter ruler. This, this is an add a quarter ruler plus, with ha which has a thinner side uh, on one side to be able to fold the paper. And this is an add an eight ruler. And an add an eight ruler has just the tiny bump over here. So if you've never heard about add a quarter rulers, they are really, really my favorite tool in foundation paper PC because you can really easily make a cut with le which leaves a quarter of an inch uh, of fabric on there. That is because there is a little bump over here. Hope you can see it. So there's a little bump and you slide that, let's say this yellow is my fabric. You slide that against your fabric and then you cut along this side. So then that will leave a quarter of an inch of fabric on your project. So I, I use these all the time when I'm doing foundation paper easy. Yeah, love these. And of course you would also need normal rulers when quilting. So I have those stored over here and over here on the other side of my work table. Really convenient to have them close by to where you're working. I think that is it as far as things you need before you can start sewing. So we need a pattern and fabric, rulers, rosary cutter, cutting mat. I guess then you're pretty much set to start sewing. And sewing I do on the Vernina 770 Quiltish Edition. A wonderful machine. I really like the big space that it has over here. Uh, and a huge quilting table that we um, made as high as my work, work table. So uh, we enlarged the workspace even more. But the reason that I'm working on this machine is because I'm a Bernina ambassador. Uh, last year I became a Bernina ambassador. They contacted me and asked me if I wanted to start working on a Bernina 770 and write about it. And uh, well, my first reaction was, well, I am sewing on a really nice Janome. I love that machine, so not sure. But then I went to um, someone who had a 770 and uh, tried it out. Then I thought, hmm. And then I thought, okay, I'm convinced. <laughs> I would love to start working on a Vanina. This machine is really stable. Uh, it can sew so slowly and super fast. Um, but especially the sewing so slowly, it's, it's wonderful. It's, it's, it's really nice to have all that control um, while you're stitching. Um, yeah, so I really like this machine. And I was pretty sure that I was going to keep using uh, this machine um, for a long period of time. So that is why we built it into my um, workspace. So let me show you how we did that. So my father-in-law and I built this workstation together, but he mainly figured out how we were going to do this. Um, so what we did was we um, made a working surface and that was, um, well, we made sure that there were kind of two working surfaces. So these are connected to this top surface and this one too. And then in between we made a lower table surface and that is where the Bernina sits on. Um, yeah, I can uh, remove it for you, then you can see it even better. So let me just pick it up and install it for you, then you can see it even better. So here we go, here goes the quilting table. We can remove that and then we can unplug it over here. But yeah, so there's this empty hole in my table where my sewing machine fits perfectly. So we made a little gap over here for the power cable. And then there's a hole over here uh, for uh, the foot uh, pedal. Is this called pedal? I don't think so. So uh, yeah, that is how uh, the sewing machine goes in here. And then here, there's a slight 
kind of dent in the table surface all around um, where the um, quilting table sits on top. So that is what it looks like without the sewing machine installed. So let's put this back in place. The first sewing machine goes in. And down the quilting table. There we go. Fits perfectly. So um, you might wonder why the machine is so in the center of the table instead of on this side of the table. That actually came through the design process. Actually we wanted to make this half of the table a little bit higher so it would be better height for a cutting but then when we were further on in the design process we noticed that the area of sewing and the area of standing and cutting fabric for me were almost as high um, so we just made it one big surface but we left this empty space on this side because when i'm working uh, with cutting fabrics uh, it's wonderful to have a cutting area over here uh, with space to have bolts of fabrics laying around and still being able to work on my machine and have this whole space empty uh, for working on quilts so that I could do the two things at the same time so I could have something here that I'm cutting while I'm working here on making a quilt and uh, I must say I'm really happy that we made it in this way because this area is big enough for, uh, for any quilting or sewing that I want to do. So then let's move on to the Q16. This is the newest member of the Shiridu family. It's the Vernina Q16. And this one is here because we're going to do a second Shiridu Bonita quilt along. That's going to happen in January, so uh, we have to wait a little while before that starts. Um, but that is why this one is here and I'm in love. Bernina makes such awesome sewing machines. They're really high quality, stable. And this one can actually do one thing really well. So you cannot sew uh, fabrics together with it because it doesn't have a bottom transport. So the, the, there are no feed dogs at the bottom. Uh, but this one is specially made for quilting and quilting it does really well. So this is called a sit-down sewing machine. You also have uh, Bernina Q20, Q24, which have a larger frame space and you might know those as long arm uh, quilting machines. When you've been a quilter for many years then you know for sure what I'm talking about. But if you're new here, uh, you have uh, for quilting you have a sewing machine. With that, you can sew fabric together, and you also have uh, quilting machines. And those come in two types: um, so a long arm, where you move the machine on a frame and your quilt is uh, steady, and sit-down machines, where you move your quilt along uh, with your hands and where your machine is steady. And I have tried both and I really like the comfort of just sitting down uh, being able to stare, steer the uh, fabric with your hands and especially when doing ruler work. So when using rulers on your quilt to make a quilt design, I love to have the control of both your hands on the quilt and just being able to sit down. So this is a really good match for me. And this is, as you can see, in its own table. So uh, just as what we made with the 770, that you have the whole tabletop as your work area. And this one already comes with a table. So the whole uh, table is your uh, work area. So you can um, pull your quilt that you're working on um, below your machine and uh, move it around over the whole table area. So over the last few weeks I've been playing around with uh, rulers and I'm starting to learn more about it and get better at it. Uh, and yeah, it's just so much fun to do. And one book that I've been reading with that is uh, ruler, uh, ruler Work Quilting, The Ultimate Guide to Ruler Work Quilting. It is by Amanda Murphy and this really has all the basic knowledge uh, when you want to start uh, doing ruler work on your machine, whether it is on a uh, sit down, on a long arm, or on a normal domestic sewing machine. Um, it doesn't matter, this book 
It's really nice. I have it over here because I'm reading it at the moment and I just want to share it with you. Um, yeah, and here I have some uh, rulers uh, that I'm playing around with at the moment. There was a question that came in through Instagram. So I've asked on Instagram if there were any questions or things you wanted to see in the Shiba Inu Studio during the tour. And one of the questions was, how do you store your rulers? So my longer rulers I've already showed you. They are over here. And also on that side. And then um, my uh, machine quilting rulers. I have them over there in a box. I don't really have a good um, storing system for this yet. So <laughs> I didn't prepare this, but here is the honest content of <laughs> the box. So I have a piece of scrap quilt that I can practice on and here are just some rulers. These rulers I really love and they're a good measure by Amanda Murphy. I really like them because they're big and they have a nice structure on the back so that's not so slippery. And these ones I also like, they're the Bernina circle rulers uh, and I have made a little a film with uh, my grippy spray on that side so this one makes uh, it less slippery so the ruler less slippery more rulers and more rulers this isn't really a quilting ruler <laughs> that is something different um, well a random quilting pattern empty package a project that I still need to make so you guys, this is just an honest inside <laughs> one of my boxes. Uh, quilting gloves. These are really handy uh, to have grip on um, your fabric when you're quilting. Well, that is how I store my rulers. So nothing really fancy, just a box with rulers. Let me see. Um, we had a structure in this video going through a whole quilting project and then seeing what tools we need. So I was with my sewing machine. Of course you need that for sewing your project together. Then I showed you the Q16 that I use for quilting. Of course you can also do quilting by hand or do it on your normal sewing machine. That's all perfect for quilting your quilt. There are so many different ways, but I like to play around with my uh, Q16 currently because I'm still learning uh, how it works and everything I can do with it. So that's a quilting. And then for binding, you also need cutting mat. Yep, yeah, I think we kind of covered all the things, all the tools that you need to make a quilt. And so maybe I can check if there was another question that I wanted to answer in this video. Well, someone asked, please show me everything about the Q16. So I hope I explained enough about it. Uh, why you use it. I can feel all kinds of videos about those machines on themselves, but uh, this is just a general tour in the studio. Oh, how do you store your rulers? Answer that one. And then final question I wrote down was, uh, uh, can you show cool parts of the studio that you love? Well, let me see. Uh, well, I really love my workstation. It's just so big and nice and right now I've pulled out all sorts of things and there's still so much space so um, yeah I love that it's uh, big and that I can leave stuff there and still be able to work that I can pack packages and still have enough space to do other things yeah really love that and another cool part of the studio it's just my cozy sitting area I love it a lot. So um, yeah, those are, I guess, my favorite parts of the studio. Oh well, yeah, and of course, I can't skip this part that I get to look uh, into our garden. So that is that for today's video. Today was all about the tools that I'm using for quilting. 
Uh, and tomorrow, so tomorrow is Wednesday, then there's a third part in the Sugar Doo tour in the new studio. And tomorrow will be all about uh, the Sugar Doo web shop and what I love about being an online entrepreneur. So that's going to be tomorrow. So more the business part of Sugar Doo. I really hope you join us tomorrow again for the next video in the online studio tour in the new Sugar Doo studio. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow. Bye!